All right, someone had asked a question on this week's problems uh, for module two, specifically question number five on page 16. So question number five is talking about refrigerant, R134 alpha, and it's asking for the enthalpy and then finally the entropy uh, based on these values. So all this is checking for is, hey, it, uh, let's introduce you to and... Um, see if you understand how to use these uh, refrigerant tables at the back of your text. So, the first question, the enthalpy of a saturated vapor at minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, saturated vapor, saturated liquid, superheated vapor, and entropy, entropy of a superheated vapor. So let's look at our uh, refrigerant tables real quick. R134 alpha tables, it's in the back of your book, uh, pages 84, 5, 6, 84 through 87, 84 through 87. Now, 84 and 85 are your saturation properties. Uh, you can see that up here at the top. So, let's look up. The enthalpy of a saturated vapor at minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll just pull this page over here. So minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't have to convert to Rankine for this. And this is saturation properties. And it's asking for a saturated vapor. So as you recall from uh, previous classes, H sub F is a saturated fluid. H sub G is a saturated vapor or gas. H sub Fg is the enthalpy required to convert from a saturated fluid to a saturated gas. So this middle column enthalpy is basically that uh, that flat line between your saturation uh, points on this on a temperature entropy diagram. But anyway back to this minus four degrees Fahrenheit and it's asking for saturated uh, gas. So the answer to 5 alpha is 102.5 BTUs per pound mass. Okay? 5 bravo is asking for the enthalpy of a saturated liquid. So that's asking for H sub F, saturated fluid, uh, at 50 PSIA. So rather than use this leftmost column of temperature, we're going to use this right, this inner column, and kind of interpolate to find 50 PSIA, which is between 49.3 and 52.2, but closer to 49.3. And it's asking for the saturated liquid. So 24.7 to 25.6, closer to 24.7, let's call it 25. So 25 BTUs per pound mass. And we could set up a ratio between these and figure out exactly where it's at. But uh, for this example, we don't need to. Now, there's two sets of refrigerant tables. The other tables are your superheated tables. And this is asking for a superheated vapor at 29 PSIA and 104 degrees. So let me put that page back, close this, flip the page. Now we're on our superheated tables. So, enthalpy of a superheated vapor at 29 PSIA. I'll bring this page here over. The enthalpy of a superheated vapor at 29 PSIA. And that enthalpy is... Does it give us a temperature, does it? Oh, and 104 degrees. So, 29 PSIA here and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's asking for the enthalpy, so 123.70 BTUs per pound mass. And then the last one, 5 delta, is asking for the entropy of a superheated vapor at 34.8 PSIA and 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's asking for the entropy, so 34.8 PSIA Double check, make sure that didn't try and trick me with PSIG. No, nope, PSIA. And 32 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and it's asking for the entropy. So 34.8 PSIA entropy at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, 0.22736 BTUs per pound mass degree ring king. Oops, make sure I got that in the video. 32 comes across at, to this uh, 34.8 PSIA entropy, 0.22736 BTUs per pound mass degree ring king. I hope that helps.